Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be continuing where we left off with Lesson 2-4 and looking at exponential functions. And specifically, we're going to start by looking at how to find the equation for an exponential function if we're given a couple of points. Um, and then we're going to be looking at some of the terms that we can see that when we look at some of these graphs, uh, like the term asymptote that you should be familiar with. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's start by looking how looking at how we can come up with an equation for some of these graphs uh, that are uh, plotted for us here. Now this is a pretty easy concept uh, to be able to do, but you just want to make sure that you do it in this exact order. Whenever we read a graph, we read it from left to right. And so this would be my first point that's being graphed if we're trying to come up with an equation here for graph A. And this would be my second coordinate there. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm starting with my, instead of starting with my first, we're actually going to start with our second coordinate that we would get to if we were looking at the graph from left to right. And re remember that the equation for an exponential formula is in the form y equals a times b to the x power. Well, at that point there, that coordinate, that's the coordinate where x is 1 and y is 10. And this is a coordinate here where um, x is 0 and y is 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I know that Again, the value for x is 1, the value for y is 10. So I'm going to put those numbers into my equation. And basically what we're doing is we're setting up a system of equations here. So it would be my y value, 10, equals a times b to the x power, which would just be a times b to the first power. And then I would take and find the, write down the fir uh, first coordinate, which again is a coordinate 0, 5, so put 5 in for y, so it be 5 equals a times b to the 0 power. And what I can do here is I can do a couple things. Is The main idea that's going to work for all these problems is we're going to divide these two fractions. And when you do that, 10 divided by 5 is 2. The a's end up canceling out. So when you divide these, the a's end up canceling out. And I have 0 b's to cancel out with 1 b in the numerator. So I would just be left with b. So I have b equals 2. And now I just want to figure out well, what's my value for a. Well, that's pretty easy to get because uh, there's two ways you could get it. One way is I could put 2 in from, for b into either equation. Or for this one, if you recall, b to the 0 power is 1. So if that's the case, if b to the 0 power is 1, that would leave me with just the fact that a would equal 5. Or like I said, if I put 2 in here for b, I could put it into either equation. But let's say if I put 2 in here for the first equation, 2 to the first power is 2. Divide 2 on both sides, you'd end up getting a is 5 again. So now I have my values for a and b, so I can write my equation. My equation, now I replace the values that I put in for x and y, and I just want to use now x and y and not actual numbers there. So it'll be y equals my a value, which is 5, times my b value, which is 2, to the x power. And if I were to graph that equation out on my calculator, this is the graph that I would get. Let's try another one. Let's try one where we don't have a y-intercept. So let's look at one of these down here in the second row. Uh, let's do maybe this first one. Let's do letter D here. So what you're going to do again is we look at this, and we're going to look at the first coordinate and the second coordinate, but we're actually going to start with the second coordinate. And I can see there that that coordinate is the coordinate where x is 4 and where y is 1 half. And then we're going to go to the first coordinate. That coordinate is where x is 3 and where y is 1. So now I'm going to set up my system of equations. Remember, we always start with our second coordinate. We start with the coordinate where x is 4, y is 0.5. So I put it in my equation, so it's going to be 0.5, my y value, equals a times b to the fourth power. Then I go to my second coordinate. My second coordinate is where y is 1, so it be y equals, or 1 equals, a times b to the x power, which is going to be 3. So remember, if you do it in this order, my next step would be to divide. And when we divide, 0.5 divided by 1, well, that's going to stay 0.5. And then the a's cancel out. 
And the b is b to the fourth divided by b cubed. Remember what that means is the fact that, well, if I have three b's from the bottom, they're going to take out three b's from the top, leaving me with just one b. So I'd end up with b. My value for b is going to be one half. And now to figure out what a is, let me just erase this here. To figure out what a is, I'm going to put one half into b into either one of these equations. Let's say if I put it in the second one. So I'd have 1 equals a times 1 half being cubed. And now I'm just going to solve that by taking, well, 1 half cubed is the same as 1 eighth. And to get rid of that, to get the a by itself, I would multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which would just, which would just be 8. So I'd be left with my a value is going to end up being 8. So my equation here is going to end up being y equals my a value, which is 8, times b, 1 half, to the x power. And that would be your answer. So I want you guys to try one of these on your own. So why don't you guys take a minute and work on, I want you to try letter E on your own. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, so let's see how you did with this one. Um, first off, you might have had a little bit of trouble with the fact that we have a negative exponent, so that's why I didn't carry out this entire thing. I want to show you what we would do here in this case. Um, but you should have recognized that um, that coordinate furthest on the right there would be the coordinate where x is 1, y is 18. If you might have thought that it was coordinate 2, 18, the 2 here is referring to just the y-axis. They don't have anything changed here on the x-axis, so we're just going to assume that they're counting by 1s. So that would be the coordinate 1, 18. And the other coordinate would be the coordinate negative 1, 2 then. So you set up your system of equations like this. And now I have it set up where we're going to divide next. And so when you divide this, 18 divided by 2, we know that's going to end up being 9. And the a's would cancel out. Now the b's, remember when we're dividing, what we do with the exponents is we subtract the exponents. So 1 minus negative 1 would be the same as 1 plus 1. So this ends up being b squared, which would tell me that my value for b would end up being three here. And so what we're going to do is, so we know our value for b is three, so now I've got to figure out what a is. So I'm going to put b into either equation. I'm going to put it in the first one. I think that would be the easiest. So I would have 18 equals a times three to the first, or just three. Divide both sides by three, and we get a equals six. And I'll put these together for our equation, and we get y equals y equals my a value, which is 6, times 3 to the x power. And that would be your answer. So hopefully you have a better understanding of how to come up with an equation given a couple of coordinates. Uh, we're going to look now at talking about a couple of terms here and reviewing domain and range and some other aspects about what we've talked in some previous lessons. But in the previous graphs, the x axis is what we call a horizontal asymptote of the function. And I won't scroll up, but we can even look at this graph here on the right. The x-axis is a line where the graph will get really, really close to that line, but won't actually touch it. I know the graph, the printing here makes it look like it's touching the line, but it's really not. If we were able to zoom in and look at that equation, you'd be able to see that it's really not touching that line. And no matter how far out to the left we go, it's always going to get approach that value. It's going to approach that point, but it's never going to actually touch the line. So we call that line, that imaginary line that the graph approaches but it never touches, is called the asymptote. In this case here, we'd say the x-axis, or we could also refer to it as the equation y equals 0. The equation y equals 0 is a horizontal line that goes through the point where y is 0. So let's look at comparing and contrasting some of these things that we've looked at now with a um, couple previous lessons ago with and the equation of a line. In this case, we have the line y equals 2x plus 8. And here we have an exponential function, y equals 8 times 4 to the x power. We'll ask us to look at the domain and range here. So we're going to compare the domain and range for this first one and the second one. Let's talk about the domains. Remember, you could always look at the equation to find the domain, or we could look at the graph. But if we look at the equation, you can see that I can put anything in there for x for that first equation. So that means my domain is all real numbers. 
I can also trace along the graph and see if I follow the graph and I follow the x-axis, I can see that it goes infinitely in the positive direction, and I can see it goes infinitely in the negative direction as well. So that means it's all real numbers. Same thing is true with this other one. If you're not quite sure, oh, I don't know, it looks like it might be going straight up. If you're not quite sure by the graph to see if it goes straight up or if it continues going in the positive direction, look at the equation. I could have an exponent that's any number. So that means my domain would be all real numbers. Now let's figure out what the range is for both of these. My range for this first equation is also going to be all real numbers because it goes infinitely up and it goes infinitely down. My range here would be all real numbers. My range for this one, remember that it does not touch the x-axis, it's above that, so I'm going to say my range is where y is greater than 0. Saying greater than or equal to 0 would be wrong because saying that would mean that 0 would be included as part of your range, as part of your y values that would be graph, and that is not possible. Now let's look at the intercepts. So let's look at the x-intercept for both of these. The x-intercept for this one is at, um, right here, at negative 4. And the x-intercept for this one, be careful, there is none. It doesn't cross the x-axis. And the y-intercept for this one, notice it's in slope-intercept form, so you can see the y-intercept just by looking at the equation. The y-intercept would be 8, or we can see here that the y-intercept would be 8. And here you can also see that the y-intercept is 8. And where do we get that from our equation? It's our value for a. So that's important to recognize, that when we're looking at equation in the form y equals a times b to the x power, the a value is going to identify your y-intercept. And then the next thing they ask us to find is if there is any asymptotes. There is none in that first equation. But for this one here, the, the asymptote would be the x-axis or the line y equals 0. And lastly, they ask us, is it increasing or decreasing? And both graphs, as you can see here, are increasing from left to right. So there you have it. If you want to do this next uh, equation here, basically you're going to do the same thing. They just want to uh, compare and contrast, but um, we'll stop the video. With that example, because I think you get the idea of what we're talking about. So hopefully now you can do your assignment without any problems. So with that, good luck.